we've had a great week and a great show, and we're going to end it in the best way with our good friend, David Clausen, Center for Ethics and Biblical Worldview. David, so glad you're back. Well, it's great to be on the Friday show with you again, Joseph. Thanks for having me. Well, it's my favorite way uh, to end my week, go into the weekend with you, my brother. You've written something that I think is a great um, start to our conversation. Uh, Christian nationalism. This is a phrase that I think, I don't know if it really came into my consciousness in the last 12 months, if this is something that kind of started with the Trump election, whatever it is. But we hear this term a lot. Why are we hearing so much about Christian nationalism? Yeah, it's a, it's a really good question, Joseph. And I think I've maybe heard about it for the last year. I think I wrote a, a short piece about this last summer, actually, in the lead up uh, to the 2020 election. Uh, there was a group of left leaning pastors who put out a statement against Christian nationalism. And at the time, I think uh, I came out against that statement because I thought essentially what they were trying to do was to drive. Uh, people like you and I, people like our listeners, conservative, Bible-believing Christians, out of the public uh, square by using this kind of scary buzzword. I, I think my thinking's changed a little bit. I think maybe there are some people who maybe do kind of identify with this ideology, um, but I do still think um, that the, most of the people who are using this, uh, they're not defining it, and they, they really are some uh, subversive motives behind the many in culture who are using this kind of scary phrase, Christian nationalism. Well, let's help, let's help some people, and let's help me think through this. Um, let, let's define our terms. What do you mean by that? Because I think, um, again, making sure that we don't just use the same words, but we have the same dictionary, because it's a very common problem in public discourse to use words that we think we know what we mean when we say them, but we don't, we don't make sure that we know what we mean, and so we may not be meaning the same thing. So when you say Christian nationalism, how would you define that for yourself or yeah. for us? Yeah, great question. Well, let's start first with just the word nationalism, and, and that's how I kind of believe the piece that you referenced, the thinking biblically about Christian nationalism. You know, nationalism, Webster's defines just as loyalty and devotion to a nation. And that's not bad, so right? It's not bad at all. It's just kind of strong identification with one's nation and the interest of that nation. Um, I think nationalism is pretty synonymous with patriotism. It's just that you have a love and a devotion and a connection to your country. And again, I think that's a, a good thing. But when it comes to Christian nationalism, the way that phrase is being used, I think the way the literature is defining it um, is kind of a, a – it's used in reference to a, a person really conflating or merging together their Christian and their American identities. And so let me flush that out. You know, what I would say is that kind of Christian nationalism um, views one's Christian and American identity as one and the same. And so you, uh, being basically a good American means that you are a, a good Christian. Um, and those who kind of really hold to this ideology would say that they believe maybe Christians deserve a kind of a privileged position in society, and, and kind of the impulse of those who really hold on to this. And I just want to emphasize, um, based on all the study I've done, Joseph, it is a small, small minority who would actually have this view. But kind of the impulse of the, the, the movement is to kind of exclude ethnic and religious minorities kind of for the purpose of accruing more power. And again, we, we can talk about why we think that's bad, but again, if I'm well, just gonna... why would why would that be? I mean, and certainly, I think what you what you started describing there sounds to me just kind of like xenophobia and outright racism, like just excluding people. Because I don't know, it's certainly not Christian, and I don't know why that's nationalism. So how, why would why would that be uh, connected with this phrase Christian nationalism? From what my understanding, Joseph, is kind of what people are doing that would kind of fall under the heading of Christian nationalism is that, again, that they are viewing um, their American identity as the same as their Christian identity. And, and so when it comes to the ultimate commitments of their heart, the ultimate commitment of their life, they, they've really merged those two things together. Okay. And I, th I think that's what's different from Christian nationalism versus just patriotism. 
Okay. And, and so when we go back to the definition of nationalism, you referred to loyalty and devotion to a nation, which is not a bad thing. And I think no. that there's an element of gratitude. And if you live in it, I mean, if I was in North Korea, would I be patriotic or would I, would I be a nationalist if I was born there? I don't know. Maybe, I mean, certainly many people are, uh, maybe because they've been brainwashed to be so. And, and maybe in some sense, everybody has been brainwashed, brainwashed in favor of the country uh, to which they are born and in the, in, the, in the place that they call home. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if nationalism is loyalty and devotion to a nation, then being a Christian who has loyalty and devotion to a nation is not inherently wrong, right? It's not inherently not- wrong. Exactly, it's not inherently wrong. I think you, you you cross a line when it kind of when your American identity almost becomes an idol. And again, I don't think many people are doing it. But if we're kind of trying to find that textbook definition, I think that's what it is. And I think that's a fair critique. As we, as we kind of to, to me, the point of this conversation about Christian nationalism is not necessarily to to settle the question of is it good to be a Christian nationalist or is it bad to be a Christian nationalist? Because that may always be a semantic debate Um, because in, in all formal debate, and I was a, I was a debater in high school and in college. And then I did some in law school as well, formal debate, but in, in, within the law, he who defines the terms wins the debates. And so the definition of the debates matter a lot in formal debate and even in cultural informal debate. But I don't want us to get hung up on that as as people who are endeavoring to think biblically. What our goal should be is how do I think Christianly? How do I think biblically about my role as a citizen? And then it comes to this idea of loyalty. When, when if nationalism is loyalty and devotion to a nation, ultimately Christians should have no loyalty that is higher than their loyalty to Jesus. That is our ultimate loyalty. And the point at which, but there are other things we can be loyal to, right? We can be loyal to our favorite football team. We can be loyal to our country. We can be loyal to our spouses. We can be loyal to our kids. But none of those loyalties, if our loyalty to our spouse requires us to sin and reject God, then we have a misplaced loyalty, even if, as we would all agree, a loyalty uh, to a spouse is a good thing in general. It just can't be a greater loyalty. So isn't that what we're working through here? Is making sure that our love of country does not uh, supersede our love of Jesus. And if the two should part ways, that we always are going with Jesus rather than our country? Uh, that, that sums it up, I, I think, perfectly, Joseph. I think as, as we just need, to, as, as American Christians, as much as America means to us, it just can't be the central defining factor in our lives. And so I, I think that's kind of where I come down with, with this whole discussion. And I, let, let's be clear, though. You know, Christians should actively be participating in the political process. I think that's the, what Scripture teaches us. As believers, we have a responsibility to engage in good works. You know, this is the second part of this conversation. Okay, well, we, we're defining Christian nationalism, but we also, you know, as Christians, we need to be wise. We need to realize what's going on in the conversation. And the left the, the, the secular left has seized on this phrase, Christian nationalism, <clears throat> ever, ever since the January 6th storming of the Capitol, and is really using it as a cudgel to, to drive out any Christian who is trying to engage in the world of public policy. Um, I, that, uh, the, the, I think you know, it might have been Tony and I talked about it on the show a couple of weeks ago, Bill Maher, the, the comedian, uh, he, when he came on a couple of weeks ago on his show that seen by a bunch of people, uh, he actually blamed uh, – he, he said what happened at the Capitol was a faith-based initiative caused by a Christian, Christian nationalistic movement. And so see what he's doing there? He's jumping on this train of just trying to paint with a broad brush any Christian who cares about this country, who cares about the issues that are debated in public policy. And so that's where we need to realize what the left is doing with this phrase, Christian nationalism. And we, we can't go along and allow them to cancel us and silence us. Yeah, that's a really good point. And I think that we always have to be aware of the re- rhetorical clubs that are being used. And I'll give us another example of how this is done with the word discrimination, much like Christian nationalism, is people say, oh, well, that's discrimination. And what we're supposed to know is that that means that's bad. And they'll say, oh, that's Christian nationalism. That's a Christian involved in in politics, therefore that's bad, or that's discrimination. And in fact, 
Christian nationalism, a Christian who loves their country and involved in their government, if that's how you define it, is of course not a bad thing. Discrimination is not always a bad thing. It really just depends on the grounds upon which you will discriminate, right? And we know that the left loves to discriminate. They discriminate now, in the, you know, this week they discriminate against Dr. Seuss. Um, they, they're picking new people to discriminate against all the time because they think the justification for their form of discrimination is appropriate. Now, Christians and secularists or conservatives and liberals and however you want to, you know, you want to divide things have different criteria upon which they would discriminate, but everybody discriminates, right? And so in the same way, and, and so when somebody says, oh, that's discrimination, the, it, it may actually be, and in fact, it may, it may be a wise form of discrimination because all wisdom is is making judgments and discriminating in ways that s some are good and some are and some are bad but we have to think through the language because so many words christian nationalism discrimination hate so many words are just lobbed like bombs and because we've been conditioned culturally we're supposed to recognize that the moment we're accused of this that's our cue to stand down and stop you know doing anything, stop disagreeing, stop voicing our opinion, because it's, it's not appreciated. That, that's absolutely right, Joseph. That's, again, why we need to realize you know, what these terms mean. Just a couple of weeks ago, you and I discussed the term unity. Now, you know, that's a morally neutral term. Unity in and of itself is not a good thing. If we're uniting to, to go rob a bank, that's a bad thing. So the, the way we define these terms is so important. And with, with this, dis, this discussion about Christian nationalism, it, again, I think many on the cultural left see this as an opportunity to further a narrative that they've been pushing now for years, which is that Christian political engagement is somehow dangerous for America and really motivated by kind of these nefarious evil intentions. Um, and, and so, again, that's why you're right. The left would love for us to stand down. They, they'd rather, you know, they would love for Christians to be cowering over in the corner, afraid to be called a Christian nationalist. And again, that's why we, we absolutely cannot back down, because as Christians, we're called to engage. One of the best ways we show love for our neighbor is engaging in these big questions of politics and of morality. Uh, that, that's how, again, we, we love our neighbor. That's how we're called to be good citizens and seek the welfare of the city that we're found. And so I think, again, the conversation we're having is one that Christians need to be engaging in across the country. Or else, If the left has its way, they will cancel each and every one of us. And, and, you know, in, in the context of cancel culture, I think that's exactly it, it's 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 helpful, I think, to think of this as a form of as an operational one-on-one uh, -on -one form of the cancel culture and the way that Christians need to equip themselves and be prepared for it uh, and be prepared not to be neutralized by it is to not care if people misrepresent you or misunderstand you. Because lobbying pejoratives like Christian nationalist or bigot or whatever the phrase is, lobbying those at you is an attempt to silence you. And it will silence you to the extent that your primary goal is to protect your reputation and be seen well by people who disagree with you. If that is your primary goal, then when they call you names, and that bothers you, you will do whatever you have to do in order to avoid being called those names that you know are not said in, in, in respect, right? And so isn't Absolutely. it important for us to equip ourselves, to prepare ourselves mentally for the fact that if we stand for truth in a, in a culture that is hostile to the truth, we will be misunderstood, we will be misrepresented, and that's okay. And when they do that, that doesn't mean I change what I'm doing. I change what I'm doing when I find out what I'm doing is wrong or God tells me to do something else, yes? Absolutely, and I, I think what we're seeing over just these last couple of weeks, I, you know, I mentioned Bill Maher. I think he is giving us a refreshingly clear view of how non-believers view people of faith, how they view people like us. And Jesus himself promised that this kind of uh, persecution, John 15, 16, was coming for those who follow him. And so we need to have our spine stiffened. We need to be aware of what's going on, and we, we need to stand for truth in a culture that every day— uh, doesn't understand what truth looks like more and more. David, I know that there's somebody listening to our conversation right now who who doesn't like um, Christian nationalists as they understand it, which is probably people like you and I. Um, and they're begging for us to have a conversation about Donald Trump. And because the Christian nationalist obsession kind of emerged in that. And so for clarification, are Jesus and Donald Trump the same person? 
Absolutely not. Is that is that a difficult thing for you to admit or no? It is not at all. No, and, and, and it's not, and I, and I, I say that, of course, tongue-in-cheek, um, because it isn't a hard question for people who are Christians. Um, though I will say there are some people who have, have a loyalty to uh, politicians that I don't understand. And as with our nation and as with our country, uh, we, we have a loyalty to people only to the extent that they have loyalty to God. When, when they part ways, we go with Jesus. When, 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 an, when a politician and Jesus part ways, we go with Jesus. When a nation and Jesus part ways, we go with Jesus, right? Absolutely. I'm a proud conservative, a proud American, but ultimately my allegiance is with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I think that's how all of us should be thinking kind of about this conversation. Yeah. But it does provide an opportunity for us to make sure that we're not being... We're not being pulled in directions in places that the gospel doesn't want us to be. So, David Clawson, thanks again for your time. Thanks for joining us. You too. Thanks, Joseph.